When buying a home, there is nothing more frustrating than knowing exactly what you want, but then realising that you can't actually afford it. But with 21st century living comes a 21st century solution. Forget bricks and mortar. How about a house that arrives on the back of a lorry, will save you tens of thousands of pounds and will be built in less than no time? The answer to all of your prayers? Welcome to my flat pack home. In this series, we'll be following families as they fulfill their property dreams the flat pack way. We'll discover the variety of modern flat pack homes you can buy today that can look anything from historic to contemporary and reveal how this new way of building your dream home can get you more for your money. How many conkers have you got? In this programme, we meet Jonathan and Alison Lai, whose dream is to build their family home where Alison grew up. Their Tudor-style cottage will be built just a stone's throw away from Alison's parents and at considerably less than the other properties in the village, all thanks to the flat pack. We hadn't found anything that met our requirements, mainly because we couldn't afford what we were looking at. Shamley Green, Waverley in Surrey, is an area of outstanding natural beauty. Its famous residents once included the artist Tony Hart and film director Alfred Hitchcock. It's just an hour's drive from central London and property here ranges from expensive to stratospheric. And that's because it's absolutely idyllic. It's rural England at its best. We'd been looking for a new home for some time but we hadn't found any, anything that met our requirements mainly because we couldn't afford what we were looking at. And we were, we were getting a bit desperate, actually, thinking about what we were going to do next. Trying to build a house here is almost impossible, as plots of land are rarer than gold dust. After an agonising four-year wait, the answer came on their family's doorstep. Many years ago, Alison's parents bought their house from the owner of the cottage next door. When she sadly died, she gave Alison's parents first refusal to buy her property. And we suddenly realised that there was this plot here that was perfect and we were, it was a bit ridiculous not to take the opportunity to, to build our own house. For me, the site is fantastic because it's, it's, it's location. We're relatively close to London. I can get to work and I can be in the middle of the countryside uh, and I can barely see another house. Jonathan and Alison didn't want to knock down the existing cottage, but planning restrictions meant if they wanted a bigger house, they needed to rebuild. We put in for planning permission to make major changes and we were told that, uh, no, you can't do that, not allowed. But what you could do is knock it down and start again. All properties are allowed to be extended by 40% of the habitable space. As the one-bedroom cottage had already done this, they couldn't extend any further. But provided the new house had the same footprint as the cottage, they could demolish it. Incredibly, the Lies architect was able to design a three to four bedroom house in the same space. And once the new build is complete, the rules change. You're then able to extend by 40%. So it's a convoluted process to get to a larger house. So once this build is finished, the Lies plan to extend their home with a further two bedrooms and another sitting room. While the cottage is demolished, Alison is keen that the owner's memory isn't. I knew the person who lived here very well. We're going to name it Phoenix Cottage because she used to paint a lot of batik phoenixes, so we've decided to name the new house in memory of her. Flat packs don't have to look modern and contemporary. They can be designed to suit you. So Jonathan and Alison are building a Tudor-style oak frame detached house by build company Border Oak. The walls of this house will be flat pack, but they want the company to build a traditional tile roof to complete its period look. As the Lies were offered first refusal on their neighbour's cottage, they avoided a costly bidding war on this sought-after plot and paid the market price for the land. A similar plot in the village would cost around £150,000. The foundations cost £18,000 and they paid just over £290,000 for their three to four bedroom flat pack home which includes £88,000 on fixtures and fittings. That's a total of around £458,000. A similar property in the village would cost around £900,000, so that's an estimated saving of almost 50%.
I've come to Alison's parents' home where they're currently living to find out more. You must be Alison. I've never had a nice to meet you. Hi there. Hi, Jonathan. Lovely to meet you. May I come in? It's sure. freezing outside. Thank yeah. you very yeah, much. In. Did you ever think you would end up living next to the in-laws? Although it's next door, it's, it's, it is actually quite a reasonable distance away from, from, from this house. And uh, the views and the location are just stunning. It and is an idyllic setting, isn't it? It's mm. quite beautiful. It... And, you know, that just made my mind up mm. for sure. It was... It was probably easier for me to make the decision than it was for... Rabbi. Yeah, I was the one that was slightly hesitant. <laughs> I have to say. Good for babysitting. Very good for babysitting and dog sitting. Yes. <laughs> yes. So why have you chosen a, a flat pack home as opposed to a conventional one? Was it, was it simply time constraints? We liked the idea of having a proper oak frame house. So mm. what you see on the outside is actually the frame of the house. It's yeah. not sort of just stuck on. And in terms of how long it's going to take to complete, how, how many more months are we talking? Hopefully we'll be in another five, six months. This is probably a slight rhetorical question, but I bet you're desperate, aren't you, to get in there? We are pretty desperate to, to move, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's OK living with my parents, don't get me wrong, but it would be nice to have a bit of our own space and be able to enjoy living family life again. <laughs> Before the flat pack arrives, the foundations have been laid. They've been dug to a deeper than usual depth of two metres. This is due to the amount of surrounding trees and the risk of their roots causing damage to the foundations. It's December and after years of waiting, Alison and Jonathan's dream home arrives on the back of a truck. Finally, the frame of the house is arriving. It's been about a year since we bought the property. It's quite a, an exciting moment. No time is wasted and already the period features such as the oak beams are being unloaded. 200 of these will make up the skeleton of this flat pack. The entire framework for this build has been put up in a factory already and any problems ironed out, which should lead to a trouble-free construction. Over the next two weeks the corner posts and the traditional green oak framework are put up and the insulating infill panels are fitted. There are over 80 of these in the entire house. As the green oak will shrink over time, these infill panels will expand to ensure an air and watertight seal in the house. By the second week, the ground floor structure is complete and work starts upstairs. The flat pack part of this build goes up in just over two weeks. Christmas is fast approaching, and so the builders have downed tools for the festive season. It's not the best planning to start a build just before Christmas, so I wanted to see how they're getting on. Just listen. Nothing but the sound of birdsong and wind in the trees. It is truly, truly magical here. And the site that they're building it on is just idyllic. I can't wait to go and have a look around. After just over two weeks of construction, nestled in the trees, I could see a beautiful oak-framed build. I think symmetry in a house is aesthetically so pleasing and double-fronted houses just look beautiful. And what I love about these ones in particular is the, is the usage of oak here. It makes it look like it's been here for hundreds of years and it's been here for like a matter of weeks, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, that's right. They, I think they do sort of build it in quite a traditional style. Mm. Are you pleased with it? I'm, I'm really pleased with it. Right from the smell of the oak, which sounds bizarre yeah, because yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's green oak and it smells fantastic to the way it looks. Uh, and, you know, like you said, the symmetry is, is, is lovely. It really is very satisfying. Jonathan and Alison have every right to be chuffed. The oak beams give this house a genuine period feel. Can't wait to see inside. Oh, look at this. I am so jealous. <laughs> you always tell when I come to one of these builds and I'm envious and I want it. <laughs> yeah. Dining part? Yeah, this yes, is going to be the dining it. bit. Yeah, it, the vision is to, to have the table roughly where you're standing there. Right. Um, kind of tuck into the corner, Lovely. all be pulled out. I think the idea is to have a sofa here, Lovely. be slate flooring all the way through. That will run into the hall as well. And then your kitchen's going to go yeah, right. in that yeah, corner. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> wonderful, isn't it? It will be. It will be wonderful. Here. It's incredible to think that this house is sitting on the same footprint as the one-bedroom cottage. Upstairs, there are potentially four bedrooms. 
it is quite simply breathtaking, isn't it? <gasps> it is. It is wonderful, actually. Yeah. It's so so nice. And yeah. When you get that extra bit of height, yeah. you just yeah. Yeah, so and, much and such a great part of the world because you're yeah. so close to everything. Absolutely, you know? that's, yeah. the, that's, that's the joy of it. It's the heart of the country, but you've yeah. got Guildford up the yeah. road and London just a bit further. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a spare bedroom here, yeah. and then that's going to be the bathroom there. Yep. Yeah. Um, then beyond that, there's going to be the sort of main bedroom and shower room off that, mm -hmm. and another bedroom over there. Wonderful. Now there was talk. You were saying about whether or not to have it as a three bed or a, or a four bed. Yeah, it's it's really potentially the room we're in now, splitting it in two, so you have two smallish, smallish rooms. Smallish rooms, got And this you. is the, it's difficult, off the plans it's hard to say. You can yeah. see the measurements and say, well, yeah, it works as a small room. But with the angles of the of the um, ceilings, mm. is it just going to feel too small? Me personally, yeah. I think if you if you did, you'd end up really regretting it because I think that they would be I mean I'm six foot and your average bed is just under six foot isn't it so that's right yeah. that's that's taken up the whole room yeah I think you're right I tell you something guys when this is finished it is going to be a spectacular house and and so worth the wait yeah I know yeah, it's been a long journey getting <laughs> yeah. here but I bet yeah. once you're in here you'll just be like <sighs> these are people that live the country life you know they've got dogs they are, they've got a little baby and they've really planned it perfectly i think they're going to be very happy here coming up winter weather causes major problems everything was going so well and now my enthusiasm has been dampened a bit by the weather and creates a huge scheduling nightmare. It's quite echoey and rather empty. Has something not happened? <laughs> I've come to Shamley Green in Surrey, where Jonathan and Alison Lai are building the dream home they thought they could never afford. But they can, because they're doing it the flat pack way. In this exquisite country village, Alison and Jonathan have decided to build their own three to four bedroom Tudor style flat pack house. With green oak timber beams and a traditionally built tile roof, they want the house to blend in with the countryside. Desperate to live in this area, they bought a property right next door to Alison's family. The local council wouldn't allow them to extend the existing cottage, but they were permitted to knock it down and start again. Keen to save money, they turned to the flat pack, with foundations right through to fixtures and fittings their dream home will cost £458,000. That's almost half the price of a similar property in the village. The build started in December and went from barren plot to empty shell in just over two weeks. Work stopped over Christmas, but the builders will be back soon to start on the roof. Well, that was the plan. It's now mid-January and the sub-zero weather has put the build on hold. We've now been pretty much snowed in for the best part of a week. So nothing's really happened since they um, finished for Christmas, which is a bit concerning. I got really sort of excited as we started choosing paint colours because everything was going so well. And now my enthusiasm has been dampened a bit by the weather and the fact that nothing's happening. With their builder snowed in up in Herefordshire, nothing can be done. Two and a half weeks later, the snow has thawed and the builders are back and work can begin on the roof. Alison and Jonathan have chosen a bespoke vaulted roof, which gives the upstairs rooms very high ceilings. This part of the build is not flat pack. There are no pre-made trusses here, as the windows must be built into the roof. The timber is cut and erected on site, much like a conventional roof, but it takes twice as long to construct compared to a flat pack. Once the roof trusses have been made and fitted, a breathable plastic membrane is attached to the inside of the roof. 38 by 25 millimetre battens are then nailed into the trusses to create the skeleton of the roof. Then some 9,000 traditional handmade clay tiles will be nailed in to the treated timber battens. In keeping with the Tudor style house, Alison and Jonathan are having an Inglenook fireplace built as a main feature in the lounge and are using traditional materials from the area to ensure the chimney stack outside blends in with the village. A lot of the houses around here have stone incorporated into them 
Um, so we thought it would be quite nice to incorporate a bit of local stone into the house. But the Lies won't be relying solely on their wood-burning stove to heat their home. A condition of their planning permission was that 10% of the energy had to come from a renewable source. We looked into different varieties like solar um, and other varieties and we, this air source heat pump seemed to be the cheapest and least invasive, i.e. we didn't have to have solar panels on the roof. You have to have a unit on the outside of the house which is effectively a bit like an air conditioning unit. An air source heat pump extracts heat from the outside air in the same way a fridge extracts heat from its inside. Then this powers the underfloor heating. It's efficient even in these Arctic conditions and can extract heat from air temperatures as low as minus 15 degrees. Now that the roof is finally on and the build is wind and water tight, work can start on the interiors. Yeah. Although the flat pack part of the house went up in just two weeks, the conventional part of this build has been really affected by the cold weather. Despite everyone's best efforts, the house is now almost three weeks behind schedule. The electrics, plumbing, fixtures, fittings and decals still need to be done. I'm back several months later to see if the house is finished. The last time I was here, Jonathan and Alison's house was quite literally just one big shell, but they did have some very big plans for it. I've come back to find out whether their flat pack home has become the dream house they always wanted, but never thought they could afford. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Doesn't your house look lovely from the outside? It's good it does, to see yes. you again. How yes. are you both? We're very well. Come in. Yes. It looks gorgeous from the outside, but it's quite echoey and rather empty. Has something not happened? It's, uh, it's it not hasn't... quite as far progressed as we'd have liked, right. um, but we're getting there. Hopefully it shouldn't be too long now. The delays caused by the weather upset the meticulous scheduling for this build, and they're still waiting for the floors, kitchen and bathrooms to be fitted. Well, I have to say... I mean, I know it's not finished yet, but you can really see that it's going to be beautiful and this is going to lend itself so well to the summer months. Yeah, definitely. One of the, the beauties of these houses is the way that they look like they've been here for 200 years. I think that's one of the things that really appealed to us. Sometimes you see new builds which have and got the been builds, stuck yeah. on the outside, but you go inside and it's like any other mm -hmm. new build. It's yeah. just sterile inside a new house, and this is different, it's got character already. Alison and Jonathan plan to tile the kitchen, hall and utility room floors with Welsh rustic grey slate, adding a clean contemporary feel. The lounge will be covered in oak floorboards, but like the rest of the house is light and airy and I can't wait to see the Inglenook fireplace. Well, clearly, this is the feature of this room, isn't it? It's huge. Yeah, it's quite yeah. big. I did think initially, gosh, is that going to be ginormous in such a... It's not a small room, but it's yeah. not a... It's a cosy room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did think, oh, it might really sort of make the whole space seem even smaller, but it doesn't at all. I like, it's such a feature and focal point yeah. of the room. Yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah, it's, it's very pleasing, actually, yeah, and I'm really looking forward to putting the wood-burning stove in there. It, it is a feature that I was really excited about yeah. right from the start, and it's, it's living up to expectation, which is great. As we put the fireplace in and, and you can stack wood around it, it will just enhance it yeah. and it That'll will make it, it really cozy. perfect for mm -hmm. Christmas. Yeah. yeah See, absolutely. I'm already thinking that far ahead. With underfloor heating powered by the air source heat pump, the walls will remain clean and uncluttered as there's no need for radiators. You do need a grand entrance, I think, in the house, and this is lovely. You paid extra to upgrade this to oak, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we did, yeah. and I'm really, really pleased. This is lovely, having a sort of proper landing when you get up to the top of the stairs. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with this space. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms and a family bathroom. This was the room that I was last in where there was no roof. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's hey, right. you know what? It's a lot bigger than I remember. Is this the biggest bedroom of the three? No, I don't think it is. It feels quite large, and I, and I think it feels like it is. I think it's quite wide, but I, don't, I think our bedroom is slightly bigger. I'm glad to see that Jonathan and Alison have kept this room as one large one rather than dividing it. 
when you come down the, the little lane and you look at the house from the outside, because it's all sort of lovely little oak yeah, frame yeah. timber, you think, well, I bet the upstairs is going to be quite tiny, but it's not no, at I'm, all. I'm really pleased with the upstairs, actually, yeah. the size of it. Um, was that a concern, then? It was a concern. The bedrooms would all be a bit pokey, but I'm, I'm really pleased with the way it's worked out. <laughs> After months of watching the builders working, Jonathan and Alison can't wait to get hands-on with the interior decoration. So you're going to paint the whole thing yourself then? Yes. When I've done it, I feel much more uh, connected to the house, much more my sure. house. Something is built from scratch and you've just got a team of people yeah. coming and doing mm. the yeah. plumbing and the plastering and everything else. I guess it doesn't feel like it's it's your house. Yeah, and we, we, we keep saying we're building a house. Well, what are you doing it yourself? <laughs> no, no, we're not. Yeah. But I have done the painting, so I can say that I've contributed something, I've done something. So close, isn't it? It's like you can. I mean, if this was the hundred meter sprint, this would be the bit where we'd be like that now, isn't it? So yeah. you're trying to get over the line. I mean, it's like literally yeah. the last kind of ten meters, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It really is very close. It's been an agonizingly long wait for Alison and Jonathan. They're just a month away from finishing. With the kitchen being fitted next week, the house will soon feel like home. Now I know you've had lots of sort of hold-ups. But would you go down the flat pack route again? Yeah, that was relatively seamless, actually. It mm. just arrived, there's a load of planks on a lorry, sat in the rain for a bit, and then up it, it got, went. Up it went, it was amazingly quick. And mm. that bit was brilliant. It's the sort of aftermath of fitting all the different tradesmen in and yeah. making sure people don't sort of overlap. And, and that, that's been the hardest bit. That's the bit. frustrating yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say, standing here and looking up at it, it's ever so imposing, isn't it? It's a really beautiful house. I agree, the way it sits on the land is, yeah. is, is quite impressive, actually. Now, I know that originally there was a house on this site that was owned by a family friend. She was an artist, wasn't she? What do you think she'd make of your new house? I think she would like it, in that it's because of the traditional way it's been built mm. and I think the quality of the construction, I think she'd really like that. I, I think she would be a bit horrified that we knocked her cottage down. If I'm honest, I think <laughs> yeah. she would be. Mm. But the house but itself. The house, the house itself, I think there's a lot of characters, mm. character of her house yeah. that still exist in a strange way. I think it's beautiful and I think it's going to be, when you're finally in, such a wonderful place for your little girl to grow up. Be a beautiful family home, yeah, it really it will. will. Be. I can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. Jonathan and Alison have been looking for their dream home for the last four years and were about to give up when they suddenly realised that the answer was right here on their very own doorstep. Now, it hasn't always been plain sailing. I think there's been a few hiccups along the way, but hopefully, fingers crossed, they will be in in about a month. And looking at the house now, with all its charm and character, it will definitely be worth the wait. The Ground Force team are getting some extra help today at four as the crew of Blue Watch join in to create a beautiful garden in the grounds of Bromley Fire Station. Next, time for some serious nauseating around. Homes under the hammer. <laughs> 